relationships. And I think we have more singles here. How many people are single? Be proud. Proudly single. Married. Married. Four, five, six, seven. Single is not proud. Married is not proud. Where do you want to be? Hallelujah. Now, we're talking about emotions and, um, or emotions. And it is a very, very crucial part of our lives. Um, I always say emotions drive people. And everything that you do is state dependent. So when I say state dependent, I mean the state of your mind. I was asking how you're feeling intentionally because I wanted to know how you were really feeling. And the funny thing is sometimes we feel somehow, but what we show outwardly is different. So you can be very upset when I say, greet your neighbor, you just <laughs> but within you, you're boiling. Or someone is talking to you, maybe your boss, your husband, your wife, you know, and maybe you're in public and you're, but you know, you're forming or showing something outward. But within, there is so much ongoing. And it's important to understand and regulate your emotions. If not, it will carry you go when you know, no. Sorry, I grew up in worry, so small, small pigeon will be coming out. Just pardon me. That's the only other language that I can speak very well. Amen. So, understanding your emotions. Let me define emotions in the way that I put it. I say it's a, it, it manifests or is a manifestation of how you feel consciously or unconsciously. It's a manifestation of how you feel consciously or unconsciously. If somebody is wondering, what are you talking about? I'm talking about happiness, sadness, being anxious, grateful. These are feelings right and these are emotions and one thing like i said is everything is state dependent if you don't take anything from this meeting tonight please take that and as we go along you would understand why everything is state dependent let's go to the book of john john chapter 11 verse 32 i'd like to show us something quickly for the script from the scriptures before we John 11, message translation, please. Message translation. Welcome back, sir. Mary came to where Jesus was. Please follow me. Waiting and fell at his feet, saying, Master, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. So this is when, this is talking about Lazarus. Next verse, please. When Jesus saw her sobbing, and the Jews with her sobbing, a deep anger welled up within him. A deep what? Can we see it together? A deep what? Anger. Jesus was on earth, and he was flesh and human like you and I. So he also got angry. And he said he welled up. Has anybody ever been so upset that something is just you're even shaking anybody ever been there anybody a deep anger welled up within him next verse please he said where did you put him master come and see they said next verse now jesus wept he wasn't only angry he wept have you ever heard men don't cry? Hello? Have you ever heard men don't cry? If Jesus is crying, please, who are you? Jesus wept. The Jews said, look how deeply he loved him. Deeply, meaning there was something he was feeling. They looked at him and just by looking at, just the way somebody's in love and then a guy is talking to the girl and you just see her do it. You can tell that there's so much going on within. Now they looked at Jesus and they said, look how deeply he loved him. If you've noticed, he was first of all angry. He wept. And now he's showing what? Maybe empathy, compassion. Are we together? Next verse, please. Others among them said, 
Well, if he loved him so much, why didn't he do something to keep him from dying? Why is he coming here to form as if he's really interested? He's really, you know, he cares. Why didn't you prevent this occurrence in the first place? After all, he opened the eyes of a blind man. Next verse, please. Then Jesus, the anger again. So you can see that he's moving from one emotion to what? Now, anger had left. And now the anger again, it had come back. Welling up again, not just cool anger now. Welling up, mad anger. The thing is brilliant in him. Arrived at the tomb, it was a simple cave in the hillside with a slab of stone laid against it. Next verse, please. Jesus said, remove the stone. The sister of the dead man, Martha, said, Master, by this time, there is a stench. That means he's smelling. He's been there for, what, three days. He, he's been dead for four days. Next verse, please. Jesus looked her in the eye. Didn't I tell you? If you believed, you would see the glory of God. Next verse, please. Then to others, go ahead. Take away the stone. They removed the stone. Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and prayed, Father, I'm what? How is somebody who's welled up in anger still remembers the protocol of the palace? Still remember how to engage. The Bible says, come in with what? Thanksgiving. He didn't go complaining, murmuring grumbling with all of that it was feeling within him he said what i'm grateful that you have listened to me next verse please i know you always do listen but on account of this crowd standing here i have spoken so that they might believe that you sent me hallelujah when I read that scripture, it was so much for me to take in because many a times we feel like the Bible is just mystery, you know, like it's American movie or Nigerian movie, but it is real. And if you have had an encounter with Jesus, you will know that these things in the Bible are actually real. It baffled me how he was able to go from so much anger. He was furious within. And then he was able to move to compassion. He didn't come to God grumbling, crying, breaking bottles. You know, he was still in control. That tells you that the emotions that you feel, even though you tag them negative, you can use it for an ultimate good. If you are in control. Amen. If you are able to control and to manage yourself, you can ultimately use whatever is going on on the inside of you for a positive good. Because at the end, I think there's one more verse I did not read. Now, please, next verse, 43. Then he shouted, Lazarus, come out. Next verse, please. And he came out, a caravan wrapped from head to toe, with a kerchief over his face. Jesus told them, unwrap him and let him lose. Next verse, please. That was a turnaround for many of the Jews who were with Mary. They saw what Jesus did and they believed him. That was a what? Turnaround. Many times, how you handle situations can influence the life of your partner, especially in marriage. I have worked with people who tell me, your husband did that, and I say, just do this. There's one I told just two weeks ago, just be patient. Because she's, she always wants to respond in the moment. Just action. Just fight. Just do something. And she reached, I said, you know what? Just be patient. And he said he has living the marriage. No problem. Have you apologized? Yes. Just be patient. And it will shock you that somebody that came and said, I am done with this marriage. I'm leaving this marriage. Because she was patient. She didn't do anything else. The man came and said, okay, I've heard you. 
He said, I will leave next week. And then the next week came. He's still in the house till today. And she came and she said, I didn't know I could control myself like this. There's so many things that would not have happened to you if you were able to control yourself. And there's so many things that would have happened to you. Right? You know the answer. Right? So I want us to focus on God's ability to arrive at that place where he wanted people to see the hand of God. So he wasn't, he wasn't scattered. He wasn't taken aback. He wasn't confused by what was going on. People were wailing, crying. Of course, there was so much. But he was present and focused on the end goal, where he was going. Amen. Now, when it comes to managing emotions and building strong romantic relationships, I said that so that you would realize that the emotions that you have, God put it there. And it is not meant to work against you. If you know what to do, it can actually work for your good. I used to say that I'm very emotional. In fact, the day my husband um, asked me, or then I said, I'm a baby, I'm very emotional. And to date, I actually am. But I've realized that a lot of times being too emotional can cause you problem. Because you say so many things in the spur of the moment, and then when you go back and look back, you realize that, I'm not trying. I didn't try at all. I could have handled things better. How many, how many people have been there before? How many people have been there before? When you look back and you be like, I didn't handle this thing well. I could have done this better. If only I just waited. And you know, when I learned this many years ago in marriage, and one of the things that I, I was really focusing on then was to be patient. And when I learned it, I'm still learning it. I'm still trying to get better at it. It has done me a whole lot of good. Having so many answers within you and not being able to say it. You know when someone, even in your place of work, when someone is talking to you and the person is, maybe your boss that you are older than, is telling you some kind of things and you are looking at the person and you are just there and like, mm. in your mind, mm. <laughs> it's not for the salary. Mm. There's so, much, so many things you want to say, but you're holding yourself. But many times we get home for those that are married and then it just, just say it like that, right? Without processing it. So there are three very important things that you must have in mind when it comes to managing emotions and building strong relationship. And I'll run through it quickly. And I call it the SEC approach, S-E-C. You need to master the SEC approach to managing your emotions in building strong relationships. The first one, S, is self-awareness. Self-awareness. Knowing who you are Knowing whose you are. Knowing the power that you have. Knowing who you are. Knowing whose you are. And knowing the power that you have. Self-awareness is that ability to focus on yourself and how your thoughts, your emotion, and your actions aligns with your desired goal. So if, for example, you are dealing with, let's say you used to be very promiscuous and you are trying to stay away from women, you're a single guy, and you're in the world and you're trying to, knowing that this is something that you're dealing with will help you to manage how you engage with women and where you lock yourself up with. Like, you cannot be struggling with sleeping with women and then you invite your babe to the house and it's just both of you in the house. When that is a temptation that you are still fighting and then you're praying to God to help you out of it. Or you know that um, in your family there's, one, there's a history, you know, of marriages that have broken because there was adultery from your side. It's been there. And then that knowledge is supposed to help you to make certain informed decisions, draw closer to God, stay closer to God, and avoid unnecessary relationships. But your problem is that you lack boundaries. 
you would most likely find yourself in the situation that you'll be telling stories on later on. So knowing yourself and knowing whose you are, because that's one of the things Jesus did. When he came to the situation, he knew that he had power. He knew, he knew, he knew that he's the son of God and he can pray to God and God will answer him. So irrespective of what was going on, he was able to control himself to take action in the direction that will lead him to the goal that he had in mind. And for you to be self-aware, for you to consciously look inward and understand what is going on with you, there has to be patience. When I got married, one of the things I realized is that I was not... I used to raise my voice. Just, let me just say it like that. I used to raise my voice a lot. And for me, it was an expression of how I felt. I mean, this is the way I am now. I'm angry. You have to know that I'm angry. What's wrong with you? I have to tell you. And this wasn't just in marriage, actually. I think I was doing it maybe at work. Because the moment I began to change, even my colleagues, people who reported to me, were giving me feedback. And I'm like, I didn't even know that this thing was there. By like me, I thought I was, you know, I have this confidence i'll just <clears throat> first daughter i have, I have three young ones always giving instructions you know so i felt it was that but of course i began to have clashes here and there with my husband and then i realized that it was something that i needed to work on and then that realization alone when we get into conflict i now try to not speak everything that is in me i have 10 answers for you already 10 i just want to tell you how this is wrong this is right this is this is that to just say everything but i had to learn that over time you don't really have to say all of it at that moment many times i even went back to think about those things and all the things i was going to say was rubbish because in that moment you're not thinking clearly remember i said at the beginning that everything is state dependent and for those of you who are single, it is a season where even though you are not married, you have emotions, you get horny. Somebody busts me and say, oh, I'm horny, what do I do? I was even happy that the person was able to ask, you know, to open up. Because these are things that we struggle. For some of us, it's some addictions that we struggle within and we are not able to deal with it because we don't know. And then many times, if you can just spend time with yourself, when you get in moments like that, you would be able to realize what took you to that place. Maybe a movie you watched, maybe the night before, you watched one very, um, what are those Indian movies? Telemundo and the likes. You watched something, or you saw a couple, or you were just thinking, oh, when, when will it be my turn? Or different things could bring up those thoughts in your mind. And you begin to feel a certain way. For some people, they say when it rains, the weather is for two. You just go on Facebook or IG. You just see the weather is for two. And that post alone just sends you down memory lane. You begin to think thoughts that are not helpful to your soul and to your spirit. And then you get in a state. Now, God bless you in that state. Now, somebody comes to visit you. That is one brother that you are even liking. Oh, yeah, it's your case. Because if you're not aware of how you are feeling, there is a tendency that you will do what you don't want to do. You might even say, ah, thank God, you came at the right time. Come and hug me, come on, this weather. Oh, innocently, very innocently. Because many people don't intentionally, some they open their crocodile eye and do what they're doing. But people of God, they don't intentionally. It's just innocent hug. And you know, some people say, what is side hug? Come on, give me full hug. You two, you go, you collect, and you stay there. How are you feeling? I'm just cold. Just stay, nothing. And then before you know it, you've, you've gone. And these are real issues that happens. I mean, there's so much. Lagos is busy, right? Sometimes it may not even be the weather. Sometimes you just want to calm your nerves. After a very tiring day or a stressful and busy day, sometimes when I'm done with meetings, like my head is exploding. I just want to go and lie down and just cuddle. I'm just tired. Just cuddle or nothing. Just cuddle. 
you know, because there is that warm feeling. And then you're like, I'm not doing anything now. Maybe it's just hard. And then you're single, and then you keep engaging in things like that. We say it's just a brother. We're just dating. We're just getting to know ourselves. Before you know it, before you know, let's watch a movie. The cinema is too expensive. Let's do it in the house. And then it's just two of you. And then you get duvet. And then you just keep going and going. And you just and you enter. And then the sad part is many times where you have tasted, there is guilt of sometimes. But something will be telling you, Shabi, you have done it. And just, just do it again now. For some people, they feel so guilty and they go to report to somebody that they, as their mentor, their leader, ah, this is what happened. I mean, somebody had called me one day, ah, ah, Fiji, guess what? Ah, I went out too. And the person even told me before she was going out, I said, don't do anything, you know. Don't go to a quiet place because I know her and she knows herself. And that's why she was even calling me. But she went and the rest is history. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. When you are in relationships, it's important to know that even if you get hot or even if you collect breakfast, it's not the end of the world. Hello? It's not the end of the world. In fact, it's even better. Because the person giving you breakfast obviously does not want that relationship. So for you to cry, for you to break your head over it, it's really not worth it because there's always something better ahead. For you who's dealing with issues of anger management, see, God created these emotions there, so it's okay to be angry. I mean, the Bible said it now. Ephesians 4, okay, I think call the verse. Ephesians 4, 26. Ephesians 4, 26. Go ahead and be angry. You see permission. It says what? You actually have permission to be angry. It's okay to be sad. But you do well to be angry, but do not use your anger as well for revenge. And don't stay angry. Don't go to bed angry. 27. Don't give the devil that kind of foothold in your life. So it's okay to be angry. It's an emotion. But if you are self-aware enough, you get to a point where you realize that, what is going on with me? Okay, I'm angry. The next question is, why? What happened or what didn't happen? That got me here. You see, God has made provision for your emotions. God has made provision for how you feel. That's why He said, "Bring your bodies." Was it Psalm Psalm fifty-five, verse twenty-two? Psalm fifty-five, verse twenty-two. Please give me. Let me see what message says. Pass all your troubles on God's shoulder. Let's see NIV, please. He says, cast all your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. So he has made provision that there are times where you would be in this moment. Come to me. I'm here for you. The boyfriend dumped you. No problem. Come to me. Your husband did X, Y, Z and he's getting to you. No problem. Come to me. Many are times when we have challenges in our relationships and we've talked about it and my husband has given final say of, Nothing. This is how it's going to be. I feel helpless. I feel very helpless because in that time I'm like, maybe it's because you are the head. But then there's something Pastor Rachel taught me. He said, there's no need. Just go to God. He's the one that has the final say. So it's like a class prefect who's feeling like he has power in class. Class prefect. But when the teacher comes, the teacher gives the overall judgment that favors everybody. So when you ask the wives, when you are married, there's no problem. You've gotten, that's why you should marry somebody that hears God. Because when you take the matter to God, God will judge it in a way that it will favor you and favor him. But if you now go and marry a person that his father is devil, then you now want to, I don't understand. 
When you are reporting, will it work for you or against you? Against you. So when I feel certain ways and I don't know what else to do, because me, I have, I'm very, very aware of my emotions. I just go to God and I begin to cry. Sometimes I just enter the bathroom, lock the door. And I'm always hiding my face so that he will not see the tears. Because the next thing is, what, what is it? Why are you crying? Like, we just finished the conversation now. Why are you asking me? Why we are crying? Right? Why are you asking me? Something you did not do or you did. But I take the matter to God because I have honored his final say. And me dragging or trying to fight him is going to cause more problems. But I have an end goal in my own relationship, which is peace. Amen. I have an end goal in my own relationship, which is peace. So knowing myself and knowing who I have to handle these things for me, I take my problems and I take it to him. So as you are, the more you become more self-aware, the more you are able to chase after growth, chase after knowledge. See, in as much as you've known your emotions, if you don't have a well of knowledge that you have built within, when situations show up, you will not have a reservoir to draw from. You will not have a reservoir to draw from. So whilst you are studying the scriptures and following what God has said, you also have to be equipping yourself. You also have to be searching, do research, read books, take courses, because these are things that helps you. The person that I am today is not who I was yesterday. It's not because the things that cause conflict is not still there. But I'm able to address it differently. Many a times, the problem is not the problem. The problem is how you are looking at the problem. It's not the problem. You have, you're dating somebody, you're in a committed relationship, and you believe that both of you have a goal. You're looking towards something, and you say, okay, let me do this exam. We're about to go to Canada. When I get to Canada, this exam will help me. I will get a good job. And you go to this guy and say, ah, please, can you help me with this money? I don't have it. And you are going to him because you believe that both of you are working together towards something, and this job will help you when you relocate. And you go to him and say, does he have? Then you get upset. Then you get angry because he did not give you the money. But you forget that he has one head, you have one head. And the head that he uses to make that money, you too can actually use your head to make that money. Hello? Hello? The head that he's using to make that money, you too can actually use your own head. It's the same God that created both of you, right? You can use your own head to also make that money and make more and even give him for his own exam but you focus on interpreting it in a certain way and then certain emotions begin to well up within you and then for some people they just end the relationship they say he's stingy doesn't share he, he, he will not give for wig he will not give for hair I beg you. You forget that there are other reasons why he may not have. But instead of sitting down to process everything that has happened, there are several reasons, several options that you can take from that experience. But you focus on that alone, and then you arrive at a destination. Or maybe even when you went to ask him, you were not conscious of his state. You know, I said at the beginning that everything is state dependent. What's that? What that means is that if comfort comes to church today, and she's had a very long, tiring day. She has told herself, this weekend is rest. See, me and my bed, I'm not going for any meeting. I'm not going for nothing. I am just resting. And I say, oh, Comfort, how are you? Oh, my God. Ah, so good to see you. Please, I need your help. See, eh? on Saturday, I need you. Please. I'm cooking rice for my grandmother's party. Can you please come? We're making rice, moi moi beans, plantain in the... As I'm telling her, what is she going to be processing? The weekend that she had already planned. Because she, in her mind, she had decided that this weekend is for me. Then God now help me. Maybe I'm not, uh, maybe I'm in a bad, bad book before. Or me, I'm feeling like I have a relationship. But um, where I am is not, I've not filled the emotional bank account for me to come and withdraw. I will most likely get a no. But in Kim, we'll call her. She will show up 6 a.m. at in Kim's house. 
So while you are observing yourself and being so self-aware about what is going on with you, you are also conscious to observe people. And that is why you extend grace to people, to your spouses, to your leaders. Because we're not perfect. We have moments where, we, where there's a whole lot. Going from a lot and coming from a lot. And you don't just assume that everything is perfect in that situation. Amen. Amen. The second thing is emotional regulation. Now, being aware of what is happening around you gives you power or equips you to then take control, to then manage how you feel. So, for example, some people think that when they get married, I don't know why there's that assumption that people will not toast you, people will not chike you, people will not come after you. That doesn't happen. Now, you're wearing a ring doesn't take away the beauty physically or the beautiful attitude that you have. Now, if you're not able to control or manage your emotions when you're single. It's going to be harder for you in marriage. You tell yourself, oh, somebody came to me and said, um, we're in this relationship, this guy is serious. I asked, are you sexually active? She said, yes, yes, we are, but we're going to get married. We're going to get married. In fact, he's going to travel. He's planning to travel. I said, okay, when are you traveling? He's not talking about it, ma. He's not talking about it. But you're going to get married, and then you're sleeping with him. Unknowingly to you, what you're doing is you are endorsing infidelity already. Because anybody that sleeps with you while you're single will most likely sleep with anybody else when you're married. So the fact that you are feeling a certain kind of feeling that's going on inside of you does not mean that you must take action. And we tell married people the opposite. It's funny. The fact that you are not feeling like you should do your responsibilities in the room does not mean that it should be like that. Hello, am I communicating? We tell married people the opposite. Because many times, for some people in marriage, depending on the situation, maybe after birth, or they're going through some crisis in their marriage, communication issues, and whatnot, for some finances, it could affect, remember, everything is state dependent. So your husband can come from work, he's had a very long day, he just read the news, and dollar exchange rate is one naira to 1,950. And he's thinking, how are we going to buy baby milk? How are we going to buy this? How are we going to buy that? And he comes back, and you come with your flinging, and he just pushes you. Everything is state dependent. So it's now your responsibility to begin to find out what could have happened. And the same thing, vice versa. You come from work or your wife comes back home and you see her in a state. It's your responsibility to find out what could have happened and show that you are available to discuss whatever it is. Sometimes they may not want to speak at that time. Sometimes they may not even tell you they may be going, I have people who come and say, oh, this is happening, this is happening, but my spouse does not know. Because they fake a different emotion when they are home. They just carry But within. There is so much. If you have not taken the assignment to be self-aware, you will not even be able to study somebody else. You will not be able to read their emotions. Am I communicating? Hallelujah. Okay, I have five minutes more. Now, it is important to know that your feelings are not always right. Your feelings are not always right. Which is why you cannot depend on it alone to make certain decisions. For example, you meet a guy. You're looking to get married and then you're ready. You meet a guy who is funny and speaks the word like Pastor Okay. He smiles like Pastor Ifine. He's tall and dark like Pastor Wede. And in your mind, you're like, everything is just adding. Just, uh, uh. He carry all of them together. What a blessed man. You will automatically begin to feel a certain way. You haven't interacted with him. And then you now, when you close, you're going out. You see the car that he drove. Guy, he has money. A man that loves God, has money, he's funny. I mean, what is, isn't God just amazing? 
And then you now begin to position yourself so that he would see you, notice you, you walk, you fall something near him. You know those that is, we have it. Just intentionally make the thing fall. Oh, sorry, sorry. Then you get up. You know those movies? And then just so that he observes you. And then he observes you. Ah, oh, you're sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh. Or maybe he missed you. Put yourself in a way he kicked you and he now has to tell you I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. We'll go to the hospital. Okay, let me take your number. And he takes your number. He took your number to just check on your health. But you have thought to the end of the earth. You have thought to the end. Because he was just checking. He's just a nice Christian brother who has conscience that you fell. And he's just checking on you. And the next thing you say, he's, he's, he's ghosted me. Did he really ghost you? Hello? Did he really ghost you? I think ghost you. Or let's, let's play another scenario whereby the same guy, because you met him and all of that, and the same guy who ticks all of all these things, and then he now comes close, and then of course he observes how you are feeling, and then he's interested in you. But he has a track record of not being consistent with women. But because you already feel attracted to him, you knock out every other thing that you should do. You knock out praying, knock out talking to your mentors, knock out seeking wise counsel, knock out going to, ah, Pastor Manila, this guy is in your cell. He's asking me, knock it out. What, what does Pastor Manila know? One guy with everything. And then you make a decision to date him because you believe that he's the one. And along the line, something happens and you begin to feel what? So beyond your feelings, you must also have rational thinking. That's the point I'm trying to pass. You must also ask yourself, what am I feeling? Why am I feeling this way? What's the root cause? And what can I do to change, to address this situation? Sometimes it is sadness. And you cannot, you can feel sad, but you cannot remain there. Three days, you've not gone to work. You've not spoken to anybody. You are sad because you don't have money. Admit that this is what has happened. But what will you do about the situation to change it? Nobody's going to come and get you from there. Maybe if you stay alone. If you've admitted that this is how I feel, what will you do about it? You admit that things are changing in the economy and it's making you, you know, feel stranded. What will you do about it? You agree that expenses of things are going up, but the family income is still where it is. What can you, it's not enough to start to fight your spouse, fight your husband, you know, give me money. You know, what will you do about the situation? Because if you remain there, it will keep drowning you. Amen. The last thing before I go is communication. And not just communication, communicating with empathy. It hits differently when you can show empathy when you're communicating with someone. James 1.19, he says, My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen and slow to speak. When, it, when you're having conversations with your partner, with your spouse, pay attention to what they're saying and not saying. Because communication is not just talking. And we do the same thing with God. Where we go and we talk, 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 one hour, and we carry our bag and we get out. And we've zoomed out of that presence. And he's trying to tell us something. But because we're not conscious that communication is two-way, we cannot download what he's trying to say to us. The same thing in your relationship. Sometimes your partner is trying to tell you something. They may not be very great at expressing it. But if you are present, if you're trying to know, there was one time P was trying to do the same explanation. And he says, just... Pay attention. I'm, mm -hmm, really? Mm, wow. Be there. Try to feel what they are feeling. And the more you are able to show that, I am feeling you. I understand you. I see what you're going through. The person tends to release more. And then you're able to connect better. But if you're absent, someone's talking to you. You are pressing for, you are doing something else. You're, you have killed the opportunity to even have conversation with you next time. We're trying to tell you something important. Be present. Keep everything else and focus. Many times they are saying one thing, but they are really saying another thing. But if you are not present, you will not be able to. And you'll be here saying, oh, men are not finding me. Women are not finding me. I'm not finding women. But little things like this can make you miss out on great relationships. Amen. 
Amen. I'll stop here because of time. And I hope that we will not just hear, but we would implement and we would act in Jesus' name.